review scores. At this point, they've been so widely integrated into any reviewing format that it's noticeably weird when it isn't there. And it makes sense. How do you measure the quality of something using a basic scale that anyone can automatically just glance at and understand? Numbers. 1 to 10, 1 to 5 stars. No matter what the range is, it's widely understood that the bigger the number, the better the thing is. Why do you think the Arctic Ocean has 3.5 stars on Google reviews? Little too much ice icebergs. All in all, though, it does its job. If you don't want to deal with all the nuance of human language, or just don't have time to read all that, just take two seconds to look at the number, and that's usually a decently good indicator as to the quality of the product. So, what's my problem with these things? It's just a shame it doesn't push the system's visual or audio capabilities. Mario U does just enough to reach an HD threshold and then it stops. Seeing Mario not push our imaginations is a bit of a disappointment. It features the same numbing, generic, bubbly music. 2D Mario games still aren't the best multiplayer experience. You start to wonder why that same creativity wasn't applied to the entire product. Sounds pretty mediocre from the way he's describing it. I wonder what he'll give it. It is a little something for everyone. You think anything above a 9 out of 10 would be pretty damn impressive. Like maybe with a few minor issues, but not this level of, eh, it's Mario, with nothing special about it, but... It's got a little something for everyone, 9.1. That's not even a full point below being a masterpiece. I've seen this pointed out quite a lot, but it feels way too often that the score a game receives in a review just straight up doesn't feel fitting for how the reviewer describes the game. Or maybe it is completely accurate and it's become widely adopted in game critic world that 9 out of 10 is an average score, and anything lower is kinda shit actually. If that is the case, then why is the scaling so out of whack. I can't help but feel it's such a waste to have a wide range of scores to give a more precise rating of a game's quality, and just refuse to give anything lower than a 6, no matter how broken it is at launch, or how little substance it may have. I know websites like IGN and GameSpot have published a brief rundown for how their review scores are structured, which is almost essential for a system like this, but I think it says a lot when people are continuously baffled with how disingenuous these reviews come off as, comparing what the score is to what it came off as, the fact that so many people are hosted under these websites and have varying different opinions can be a major explanation for a lot of these inconsistencies, but I can't help feel when IGN simultaneously gives Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U a 9.6, and then Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury on the Switch a 7, even though the Switch port improves upon basically everything from the original game and has a brand new story mode, that several questions will be raised. I know each game was reviewed by a completely different person, so the reviewer of the Switch version might have given the original 3D World an even lower score, but when both of these reviews are simply labeled under IGN, what is some normie browsing game reviews supposed to think about this? That the Switch version botched up the original? Quite the opposite, it's almost universally agreed upon that the Switch version is superior. I shouldn't have to do research to understand a review score that I was supposed to be able to understand by being lazy. To further illustrate how blurred I feel ratings have gotten, let's do a little thought experiment. I want you to think of a video game that you would rate an 8 out of 10. The details of this game you thought of don't matter for this experiment, only your general impression of it. Would you consider this to be an awesome game, or just a good game? Or even some may think it's a game that's just average. Like, why are you giving it so many points just for existing? I know review scales naturally wouldn't translate perfectly between person to person, but at this point the inconsistency is so large that it's like, why does the number even exist to give you a shortcut when you gotta decipher what it's even trying to convey to you? Now I know this is the point in the video where I encourage you to watch independent reviewers since there's none of that corporate bullshit that's involved in professional games games journalism, and while I don't see the point in completely sucking up to people who are simply talking about video games as a hobby, I'd say it's a lot easier to get an understanding for what you're in for when you listen to someone whose rating of a game has no stakes in their career. Hell, I'm more inclined to listen to random people in some online gaming forums, as at least all their criticisms will be upfront and honest, to where even if you disagree with them, you'll be able to see it easier and make an informed decision based on that. Overall, I 
I think it's great we can go online and get a general idea of what to expect in terms of quality from a new game. Not everyone has constant disposable income, and especially if you're young, each purchase means something, so you want a game that will hold you over for a while. To a lot more casual consumers, I don't think the very nuances that make a game a timeless masterpiece to one guy really carries that much more weight than just a simple guarantee that you will have a consistently fun time with a game. Little Timmy getting Mario 64 for Christmas in 1996 isn't gonna explicitly care at how it revolutionized 3D gaming as a whole. He just wants to have fun playing as Mario, running around all these big open levels collecting stars. But there are so many avenues for gauging the quality of a game now that professional game reviews almost feel obsolete. The whole gaming journalism sphere largely survives on getting early copies of games to be the very first ones to post their reviews, meaning they will inevitably gain more traction than anyone else. That and the connections these websites have with massive gaming companies means they really won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Which is a shame since as much as I enjoy laughing at a toddler who's getting paid to be incapable at playing a Spongebob game, I can't help but be so over all this stupid discourse. Professional game reviews are just kind of meaningless to me now. It really doesn't blow me away if a game gets great reviews because that simply means it isn't a technical nightmare and or is from a popular franchise. Not to say all these games are mediocre or anything, there's incredible games out there that score well, but the fact that it blends in with so much mediocrity just means it's hard to make these games stand out. Why are people mad that Kirby got an 8 even though that should be a very good score? Well, these reviewers kinda condition them to see that as not good enough when they see games score higher for seemingly less. I think it comes with the territory of sharing your opinion online that some people are just gonna be mad at it, but professional games journalism has dug itself so deeply into a hole to where I really can't say I feel sorry for it. I'm not gonna act like I have some deep understanding to where this all went wrong, or of all the cogs that spin in this industry but there's a clear issue here when games journalism has become such a massive punching bag in recent years. I really can't see this changing anytime soon since it's a massive industry and has pretty much taken a permanent seat in online culture, but I really don't see the point of us giving it any power by just not caring since it really isn't worth it at the end of the day. I think game reviews can be genuinely great, insightful, and even entertaining if done right, but this isn't something that can realistically be be accomplished in such a machine that shits out what are 99% some of the blandest reviews of all time that only gain relevance if something absurdly stupid is said. We just need to bring back good, honest, true game reviews into the spotlight. We need to make game reviews great again. What game is this, Sonic 06? I could probably come and get a piece of coffee, I mean a whole thing of coffee, and come back and it would still be loading. Just look at this. This is taking forever to load. Okay, finally loaded. And when's it gonna start? Oh wait, finally. Just look at this. These graphics are horrible. 